we are going to look at six main demons that are mentioned in the Bible and what are their functions. Now talking about demons, it's important that we go to God's Word instead of going to our experiences or what we read online. You know, many times during deliverance, a demon will speak up that I am, you know, a demon of obesity, a demon of tiredness, a demon of hate and demon of anger. And I am demon of rage and religion and a Jezebel spirit and so many other things. It's important to understand that names of demons, they reveal the nature of demons. Unclean spirits sometimes call themselves by idols, animals and historic people who are notorious for their evil deeds. Demons in the Bible are called evil spirits, they're called unclean spirits, they're called familiar spirits, they're called lying spirits and angels of Satan. And their goal is to entice, to harass, to torment, enslave, cause addictions, defile, deceive and even attack physical body. The first spirit that I would like to mention that is mentioned in the Bible is 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 17. Where Paul says to Timothy, he says, God has not given us a spirit of fear. A spirit of fear is a demon. There is, there is a healthy fear. There is a fear of God. And then there is a spirit of fear. A spirit of fear is a natural fear that invades your life. It's a fear of circumstances, fear of death, fear of driving a car, fear of people, fear of insanity. It's a chronic timidity. It's paranoia, fear of isolation, fear of failure, fear of losing a job, fear of getting married, fear of getting sick, horrors and nightmares, as well as fear of the dark. There is natural fears. There is a holy fear, the fear of the Lord. And then there is a demonic fear. It's a natural fear that grips your life and paralyzes you from doing what God wants you to do. A lot of times behind that, is a demonic spirit and when the person experiences freedom they also experience this release from this fear and they begin to go into places they were not able to go before they're able to have relationships they could not have before because something always held them back like a chain and it didn't allow them to go as far as God intended them to go the second fear the second spirit I would like to highlight in the Bible is the spirit of death in John chapter 10 verse 10, it speaks of the nature of Satan, which is to kill, steal and destroy. You know, if he can't destroy, he will kill. If he can't kill, he will steal. Meaning he will take something from your life without ever being present or visible to you. A spirit of death is a spirit that is behind constant thoughts of suicide, murder, epilepsy, self-mutilation, abortion, abnormal grief, mourning and also convul convulsions. Spirit of death a lot of times when people you know cut themselves, when they uh, also uh, contemplate suicide and when they experience a certain even um, convulsions and epilepsy, uh, a lot of times the spirit enters through abortion. When people commit abortion that a spirit enters into their life, it's a spirit of murder, it's a spirit of death and it begins to plague their life. And maybe you're seeing these signs in your life. As you're listening to this right now during this lesson, I want you, don't just listen and take notes. I want you to take inventory of your heart. Do you see these patterns repeating in your life? If you do, we are going to pray together in just a few minutes and cause the Holy Spirit to break the grip of spirit of fear and spirit of death over your life and over your family. Another one is the spirit of harlotry or spirit of lust. As mentioned in Hosea chapter 5 verse 4. It's an evil force behind pornography, adultery, fornication, prostitution and homosexuality. Many times this demon brings sexual dreams and appears as a spiritual husband or spiritual wife in a dream. There's a demon that is behind pornography that's released into people's lives. See, when people watch pornography, they don't realize is a lot of people who are participating in the pornographic films are on drugs. And because they have to be on drugs to do those kind of acts that they do. A drug can be an open gate to the demonic realm. And so you're getting that impartation into your life, that demonic spirit that comes into your life. And you need to renounce that, and you need to forsake that, and you need to walk away from that so you can walk with the Holy Spirit instead of living under influence and control of a demon of lust. 
Another one is the spirit of bondage or spirit of addiction as Romans chapter 8 verse 15 says. This demon stands behind addiction to alcohol, drugs, smoking, gambling and also video games. As well as lighter addictions as contributed like addiction to food, addiction to television, phone, computer, money, work, sleep or constant tardiness. It's when people have an addictive thing and yes it's a habit but a lot of times behind it is a demonic spirit that causes the person to keep on falling into the same thing. If you're addicted for example to smoking or drinking and there's just no matter what you keep falling into that thing and you've tried therapy and you've tried disciplining yourself why don't you see God for deliverance? Why don't you believe that during this course God's gonna deliver you and you're gonna take whatever steps are necessary to see yourself walking in freedom even after your deliverance. Now also another one is the spirit of infirmity and a similar one is the spirit of death and a dumb spirit. Spirit of infirmity is really behind allergies, diabetes, arthritis, cancer, constant weaknesses, mental disorder, hutchback, organ failure, nerve disorders, chronic rash and fungal infections. The similar one is also a spirit of death and deaf and, uh, deaf and dumb spirit. It's when a person is deaf and the person is mute. And so we see in the story of the Bible where a person couldn't speak and they couldn't, they were deaf and they were dumb. But behind that was a demon who took on their dysfunction as their name and he functioned in their dysfunction. And so when the demon was cast out, the person started to speak and the person started to hear. We've seen many times where people couldn't have children and when the demon was cast out, they were able to have children. We've seen one person who had a sleep problem, a sleep apnea and when the demon was cast out, they were delivered. Another person I recall who had cancerous, uh, who had cancer in their blood and when they were delivered, they were also healed. And so God is able to bring total healing to your life and a lot of times during deliverance, healing takes place. And so that's why we're not just called to pray for healing, we're we're called to heal the sick. We're called to bring God's Word on the scene, God's Kingdom on the scene so the person can experience deliverance because many times behind the deliverance is the door to their physical healing. Spirit of pride is next one. Pride is not just an emotion, it can be a spirit. Spirit that brings arrogance, revenge, rebellion, redness, egoism, lust for power, criticism, anger, independence, cruelty, vainglory and also jealousy. It's where a person is not just you know fall into pride but pride possesses them. Please understand Satan did not fall from heaven because Satan was stealing or Satan was lying. Satan did not fall from heaven because he was watching porn or smoking weed. He fell from heaven because of pride. It's one of his favorite demons. It's one of his favorite characteristics is arrogance and pride. And last one is spirit of Python or spirit of divination as it says in Acts chapter 6, Acts chapter 16 verse 16. Spirit of divination as it's also called is the, its main assignment is to deceive. This spirit operates through a cult like Freemasonry, Mormonism, Scientology, secret societies, New Age, Jehovah's Witnesses, Eastern religions, fortune telling, chain letters, black and white magic, calling out the devil, numerology, Satan worship, war of witching, levitation, charms, Ouija boards, curses, horoscopes, zodiac signs, acupuncture and even dream catchers. Behind a lot of these things, if not all, there are demons that will attack a person if they come in contact with these things. Sometimes maybe you grew up in a family that dedicated you to one of these occults and after you became a Christian maybe you're still noticing a black presence that is following you everywhere. Perhaps you turned to God from a false religion and you're noticing a certain setback. I'm not in any way wanting to blame the devil. God never calls us to blame the devil. God calls us to resist the devil. God calls us to cast out demons not to blame them for anything. Blaming devil is not gonna get you any breakthrough. But when you come against them, when you come against the generational curses, when you come against the, the family heritage that maybe has been passed on to you and you claim the blessing of Abraham, you will see breakthrough and you will see God's blessing in your life. Demons are doomed to fail and you are gonna succeed. You're gonna overcome because you're more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. So let's right now take a moment 
and come against every spirit of fear, spirit of bondage, spirit of infirmity, spirit of heaviness, spirit of depression, or a spirit of python that is maybe attacking your life right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I ask you that you will fill the room right now. Your presence is what brings deliverance. Lord, your word says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Come Holy Spirit right now. Fill that room. I command every spirit of fear. I command every spirit of affliction. I command every spirit of heaviness and every python or a snake spirit. Every spirit of lust and every spirit of pride. In Jesus mighty name. To loose God's people right now. To come out of that person right now. To leave that person right now. In Jesus mighty name. Be free in Jesus name. Be free in Jesus mighty name. Lord, I apply your blood over this person right now. And I speak your word of deliverance into their situation. Let them just experience that deliverance right now. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.